I'm really excited because we're actually heading into Sydney with Frank's Dots on Ute. We're getting fuel right now, but Frank told me that he's always wanted a shot of his Ute on the Harbor Bridge. So we're gonna get that for him. And then we're gonna do a real deep dive into his car. If you enjoy our YouTube videos and have been wondering how you can help support their creation, consider joining the Haggerty Drivers Club, which includes a subscription to Haggerty Magazine, unlimited access to our valuation tool, exclusive offers and rewards with reputable brands, 24-7 roadside assistance with flatbed towing, early access and VIP perks to select Haggerty member events, and unlimited classified listings with no additional fees. You can find the link in the description below. So we're following Frank and it's just so crazy to see it parked next to just the any ordinary pedestrian vehicle now and everything towers over it. Even a Toyota Corolla or a Hilux, it's just such a tiny vehicle. It's also insane to me that Frank can fit in it. I mean, he's sitting so close to the wheel. He's just shoehorned in there. It's crazy. I can't wait for you to see these shots. Look at where we are. So that's downtown, that's the city, that's the opera house, that's the bridge. Love it man, so good. Is it me or is this the most Australian thing that we could possibly do? This is definitely Australian. Ute, Harbour Bridge, Opera House. Oh, it's great. It's such a beautiful day too. Incredible. It's just got kissed by the rain, no problem. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. I'm so, I say I'm blown away a lot, but I'm legitimately blown away. I was kind of jokingly thinking like, ah, oh, it'd be kind of cool to get some shots of Sydney in the background with the opera house. I didn't even realize a place like this existed. This is just a residential street, but we have the opera house, we have the Harbor Bridge, we have the city, we have probably the craziest Datsun I've ever seen in my life. This is unreal. I have the chills right now. I have the chills because th this is what I love to do. I came all the way down to Australia to check out the GTR Fest and this was my pick of the show. There was no question about it. You know, I like the weird and the wonderful, and that's exactly what this is. Yeah. So what did this start life as? So 20 years earlier, I had a Datsun 1200D with a 13B turbo. It was a bit rough around the edges, but it didn't matter. We just wanted it to go fast, you know? So we ended up running like 940s, 145 back in 2000. 20 years later, yeah, we've, we've come up with this, you know. You've gone through a couple of these, but 
Building cars is not your trade. You actually uh, are a pizza man. Yeah, I am. Catering. Yeah, I've been doing pizzas for about 30 years and love doing it. And it's great. Like, it's just, a, it's a good job. I love it. But racing and cars is, is it. So let's just take a look at the engine. Like, this is obviously the highlight of this vehicle. It does have a GTR badge. So VR38, what year R35 did you get this out of? So this is out of a 2015 crash to GDR. And I've even left it on there for that purpose. You know, red R35 is what it was. Uh, 59,000 kilometers is what it had on it. So it's still a completely stock engine, like exactly how it came out. We cleaned it up, but um, standard firewall, Inner guards, everything's factory. Even the front is all factory. We got rid of the twin turbo setup and went with the single turbo. That's why the pipes come around into one. And do you think you could have put the twin turbos on this? I think we could have, yeah, I do. So the original build, we had a, a Mazda 20B three rotor. It was a workmate that was basically saying to me, hey, why don't you put a VR38 in it? The reality is, I said, what's that? I don't even know what that is. And he said, hey, no, it's out of an R35 GDR. And I was like, no, nah, aren't they like RB? And he goes, no, nah, man, V6. And my mate owns Just Chap and let's do it. Is this the world's first swap like this? I'll probably say so, yeah. I, I had a look online before, and I think it was a 260Z that, that had one here in Australia. Uh, but yeah, I don't think anyone's done a, a 1200 ute before. Or even a 1200. And then, so what motor originally came to this? Is uh, it yeah, like um, 1.2 litre, four cylinder. Carbureted. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Could be like 80, 85 horsepower or something weird like that. Uh -huh. With that said, the way it sits right now, what is this dyno at? So we dyno at 650 horsepower. I didn't want to push it. I just wanted to drive it and enjoy it. Just like we did today, coming for a cruise. Love that, you know, love that side of it. Let's check out the main feature of this build. I've been shooting cars for 19 years and I've never seen this kind of setup. <laughs> this is so ridiculous. So this is actually a cover that you custom made? Yeah, correct. So they don't come out factory with this, but I got um, someone to trim it up. It's funny because it looks like you're carrying a lot of stuff here, but yeah. this is all necessary items mm -hmm. for this vehicle to run at all. What is going on here? This is insane. So when we originally built the car, it, the turbocharger was at the front, but we just had clearance issues. So one thing to another, the best option was to put it here and we've made custom made extractors they go into one pipe that actually mount to the bottom. So then we can just pull that off and have a quick change if we needed to. And then, so where does the exhaust actually exit? So we've got two exits. We've got an AES valve that just stops under the cover. And so when we're in race mode, this exhaust just comes straight out the side. Wow, it's just right there. Right there. Okay. So then it actually routes then over the diff through two mufflers, a catalytic converter, keep it all uh, street legal, and this comes out here. And it's so quiet. Yeah, so that it's, was the... It's honestly quieter yeah. than a stock R35. Oh, yeah, absolutely. We decided to go with a, a like a standalone oil system for the turbocharger. We have a TurboWorks uh, oil pump that just circulates itself. So if anything does happen, God forbid, it's not going to affect the turbocharger. It has its own oil. Got it. What about the size of the turbo? How what what is the actual? So it's a Borg Warner turbocharger. It's a seventy six front wheel. So look, it's okay <laughs> because I'm a racer. Like it's small, but for the purpose of what we're doing here, it, it does the job. <laughs> I don't really see this being small, but uh, okay. Um, it looks big in a small area, <laughs> but um. And then so, because this is so far away from the engine and there's so much piping, yep. how is the lag? It comes on, as soon as I floor it, it comes on. All right, and then what's going on with this tank? Oh, here? okay, so this tank here is a water tank for the intercooler. Like I said before, we've got a water to air intercooler, which is under the tray, and this is just more capacity. So the water will get pumped through 
uh, goes through the inner core, then goes to that front radiator, and then comes back into here. And then, so let's talk about these two giant contraptions here. Because we're running E85 and we needed capacity, this is basically 120 litres worth of fuel in here. And as we were trying to figure it out, if they just look like nitrous bottles to me. So <laughs> one thing led to another. I've got uh, my mate Mark Hayes that hooked us up with the, the these, they're not fake, but the, he hooked us up with these. We mounted them to make it look like that. And then we got the colours and some <laughs> guy off eBay made these stickers for us. And I told him to make them bigger so it looks in proportion to. So then front subframe is still a Datsun. Yeah. And then what about the rear? So we decided to go with nine inch uh, diff center, 35 spine axles. Chassis rails being moved in to accommodate, but it's still factory sh uh, chassis rails. How did you guys do this? Like this also ties into the cage. Yeah, correct. So when it originally got done, like I said, I wanted to have a really clean floor. And so even this detail of having the the rail follow, because the standard Datsun, that's what it does, but that's usually over here. Mm. And I still wanted to have that factory looking sort of a deal, but I just wanted a really clean, nice data, you know, which yeah. like we've done. So then are these the biggest tires you can fit uh, or this so this is more for when we need to go to the track so it's a 275 65 drag radial we can fit like a 28 10 and a half on there but yeah this is you know good for street and then what about the front oh so the front like i said this is more for the track because we were at the gdr festival we left the the wheels on here this is like a 125 i think mickey thompson front runner with the world uh, racing wheels, but normally we we drive around with a 17-inch Simmons. How does this stop? Oh, it's awesome. So we got, I think it's R34 brakes on the front, and we've got some wheelwood brakes on the back. Uh, so with the, all the testing that we've done, it stops like a, a an AMG. Let's talk about the interior. There's so many cool things I want to talk about. I'm actually so happy that you came to GTR Festival so I could give you this uh, award. We'll start with the transmission. This yep. tunnel is insane. It's so big. It's massive. And, I, and the reason why it is so big is because we've been racing for a long time. Like we know working on cars, we wanted it to be easy. So aesthetics of it would have been make the smallest tunnel just to fit and make it look really nice and all that sort of stuff. But when you needed to pull the, the transmission out, if you needed to, it was gonna be a pain in the ass. And I said, let's just make a big tunnel so we can get to it with normal tools and if we need to. And that's why the tunnel's that big. Uh, but we're, you know, we've got a turbo 400 transmission in there, trans brake in there. The great thing was when I decided to go with this engine, I did a bit of research. And like one of the first things that came up was ATI in the States make a an adapter plate VR38 to Turbo 400. So that was really the, otherwise I would have just went into manual mode again and not as nice to drive, I suppose. You actually would not have been able to use a R35 transmission in this. No, that's Because right. of packaging. You're correct. Because it's a rear transmission setup yes. with a torque tube to go back up front. You just couldn't adapt it. No, that's right. Like it's a small again. enough car as it is, yeah. let alone trying to do something like that. So thank God that they did that because it worked with what I had and just like win-win. This is so cool. And then the handbrake still works? Yeah, absolutely. The parking brake. Up. Yeah, handbrake works. Everything works. I mean, here's a, the parachute for when we go to the drags. Mm -hmm. Blinkers and lights and the streetcar. This is streetcar. Streetcar Lord. This is South Streetcar. Yeah. I love that the Haltech is just sitting right here in the middle. It's kind of like um, uh, Back to the Future. <laughs> well, you know what I'm talking about? Flex when, capacitor? Yeah, the flex yeah. capacitor was just right here in the middle in between yeah. the, the driver and passenger. Um, well, it worked out better that way because a lot of the things was going to the back as well as the front. And, you know, with the rotary setup, I had MSDs already mounted and everything there. So as much as the Mazda fought us along the way like when we decided to go with this it was just like everything went into place it, the reality is it was a three-week conversion so it got done in three weeks 
the cage work is incredible. Yeah, I yeah. can't believe you guys wrapped all of this stuff. Yeah. And what about the steering column? It's still yeah. So this no is still our steering. factory. Uh, that's in column. Uh, so it's been modified because they come standard with a steering box, oh. and we've got a um, rack and pinion in there now. So this is all still factory uh, Datsun. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got the Momo steering wheel on there. Uh, for race purpose, we've got a line lock is this button, and this is trans brake. Uh, we've got the bump when we need to bump in. Um, you know, drive-by wire, the the accelerator cable is there. It's not cable, but, yeah, accelerator's there. This this is so cool. So did you guys make a custom dash for yeah, all this so stuff? Yeah, Motorsport 3D do uh, a 3D printed dash, and then we got it dipped in the carbon fiber, and we've got the Haltec uh, dash and the... So the switches. All this stuff works. All. Everything works. Amazing. Everything and you works. have a sound system in here yeah. too? Yeah. Just a normal, nothing, you know, crazy. Uh-huh. Um, Just to be able to listen to music. A couple other things that we didn't have a chance to talk about in the bed. You have the battery here. Yep. But you also have like a little tray for extra stuff. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> What so, is that, VHT or something? Yeah, it's a uh, pimp juice, a, you know, traction compound. Uh, and when we go and do photo shoots and uh, we race uh, no prep sort of deal, like we can, yeah, that's what that's for. And we, and we used to carry the castor oil for the 20B. That was what that was really for. Now we don't really need that castor oil anymore. And so we'll leave that in there and, and the battery just wait. We, we thought we'd have it over the back wheels and that's where that ended up. So then in terms of the actual chassis itself, was it in pretty good condition? Oh, or did yeah, you have absolutely. to do a lot of restoration? So when we originally bought the car, it was like there wasn't even a tool put in the bed. So it had been very well looked after. So everything underneath was so clean, no rust. So it was hard to find, but we found it. And there wasn't a lot of uh, repairs that needed to be done, but and everything was worked well. Was it originally red? It was originally white. Oh, and then once you did all the body work or yep. the tubs and everything, you changed it to red. Did you strip it down all the way? Yeah, so he, it was a bare metal respray. And, you know, when you're picking a color, you know, what do you pick? And the reality is it was going to be I go back to white or we go with red because, you know, my other race cars uh, have been red. This vehicle was never meant to go this fast unless it was dropped from a cliff. Yeah. You know? <laughs> that's right. I mean... That's a good way of looking at this it. This thing, it. with the original motor and transmission, I couldn't imagine what the top speed was. Yeah. Probably... It wouldn't have been a lot. Not close to the triple digits at all. No, no way. When I built it, it was like, oh, I want to build the craziest stats, and that's not what happened. I just wanted something that was pro street, cool i thought i had it with the 20b and it did it was that was cool as well but then things just led to this it wasn't like oh i'm gonna put a gdr engine you know it wasn't it wasn't that thing but i'm so glad that i did and you know i just i love it now like it's it's so good have you had a chance to weigh this on scales oh yeah so it's 1250 kilos cool so we'll get a couple more shots but i actually want to ride in it and yeah. feel what it's like to be in it. I'd be disappointed if you didn't want to ride in it. <laughs> what is this called? Do you have a name for this? So the name is Mr. Heli. Back in the day, we did a few burnout competitions and, and we won. And so a heli is a helicopter, like a burnout. Yeah, so Mr. Heli, I got into the race car and we kept that name, you know, Mr. Heli. So then when we built this car, I just wanted to keep the Mr. Heli, but we put Heli on the number plate. I so love that. That's how that's happening. All right, this is actually really comfortable. The seat's really nice. Yeah. Um, I actually have just enough leg room for both of my feet together. It's quiet, we can actually hold a conversation. Absolutely. So then the Turbo 400, you still have to shift it through yes. the gears? Yeah, manual got uh, it. body, so yeah, it doesn't shift automatically. I've got to do the shift, oh. and the Haltech shows me on the dash what it is. Mm -hmm. Neutral, first, 
seconds. Uh, have you done the calculations in terms of mile an hour, what this is capable of with uh, this so gearing? This should do with the gearing in the diff and the transmission. Uh, we should run, you know, 150 mile an hour if we went to the racetrack, the drags, like quarter mile. Uh -huh. um, but it, what would it top out at? Oh, uh, yeah. If so, you did like a standing mile event. Oh, okay, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know, I've never sort of, look, it's at 85, that's in you, you know, how fast <laughs> you want to go. Like, I think we're pushing at 150, yeah, you know. Yeah, but, yeah, 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 I get that. When you're driving this around town, it's pretty much not using the turbo at all. Huh? Not at all, you're correct. So it's like it's NA. Uh -huh. And so like this, if we need to accelerate, like, still not even using turbo just the the torque of, it's a v6 you know yeah, so that 3.8 kind of, liter v6 yeah amazing just really smooth like this is the only sort of thing but as i'm a racer and i'm a car guy so this doesn't irritate me you know what i mean where am i <laughs> you know what blows me away is also that for the size of the radiator it keeps this cool so this is like a new generation from pwr that when i spoke to luke I said to him, listen, these are the dimensions, just make it work, like, make sure it works. And he was like, man, it's going to work, and it does, and it's true, and it, and it works. And it's, like, you can see the temperature, cooling temperature is like 83 degrees, we were yeah. just stopped at the lights. And then we're, we're just sitting in traffic, we're literally in the middle of the city, we're in downtown yeah, right now. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. You the know, suspension is really nice too. Listen, it, it drives really nice. Like, what? like, like I, I keep saying, it's so smooth. It's not. I mean, this is an '85 model car, you know. Like, mm -hmm. like a, it just, I just love it. And I'll, I'll check the brakes for you. Wow. You know, it's just really, Whoa. really good, really safe, and it's just smooth. It drives nice. I love it. I love it. Yeah.